Okay, so we're here with Dr. Pete Olaserga, who's a sports psychologist. He's been involved with many different sports, but he's uh, also been involved with a lot of uh, boxing science athletes as well, done some uh, workshops for the boxers and uh, online um, with like doing interviews with Johnny Nelson, doing some webinars as well. So it's great to have uh, Pete on the line. First of all, Pete, how are you doing? How's uh, lockdown treating you? Um, doing all right. Uh, as you can see, I'm uh, working from my makeshift office in my attic, which is uh, pretty cold. But other than that, I'm adapting reasonably well and uh, yeah, getting by. Yeah, for those who know you, know that you're a hard trainer. Um, have you been adapting your sessions? Um, all right. Yeah, it's, it's not gone too badly. So I've been uh, I've been doing some um, some skipping. So I'm going to be an expert skipper by the end of this because um, I can't really get out and run. Obviously, I can't sit on a bike, which I like to do uh, quite a lot as well. So yeah, trying to do some of the uh, trying to replicate some of the red zone running runs with a skipping rope, which is uh, been met with mixed success uh and then i've got a couple of dumbbells of a couple of different weights and uh yeah just trying to kind of cobble together some sessions around that fantastic so today pete we're going to be uh, reason why we've got you on the line uh is to talk about uh sports psychology and yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be pretty tough for athletes at the moment in mm -hmm. terms of like see like what are they working towards because they don't know when they're going to be next competing um yeah. it's, it's a lot of uncertain times uh, first of all before we go into some sort of constructive methods that they can be doing what kind of the challenges are you seeing that athletes can be facing during this lockdown yeah well i mean like you say it's, there's a lot of uncertainty around at the minute um i think you know one of the things that, that perhaps you should acknowledge as well is there's, there's going to be a lot of disappointment um a lot of frustration you know, you look at look at Liverpool, for example, you know, they're like two games away from winning the first title in 20 years and, you know, season's blown out the water. Uh, we were about to have probably one of the best NBA playoffs that we've seen in the last five, six years. And again, the season's over, it's done. So there's a lot of disappointment at that, a lot of frustration, perhaps a lot of anger as well from athletes at, at cancelled competitions. Olympics has been put back, you know, a, a year. So all of those athletes who've been training and working towards it, have now had the goalposts moved completely. So, um, as well as the uncertainty, there'll be you know some of that stuff as well. But like you say, we just we have no lot, no idea how long this is going to go on for. Um, a lot of uncertainty flying around, and with that uncertainty, always comes that anxiety. You know, the unknown, what's coming next. Um, anxiety around competition. When am I going to be? When am I going to be competing again? anxiety around training you know am, am i going to be able to train as well as i normally do um and and you know all, all of those different emotions that that crop up um i think one thing that's probably worth mentioning as well is that there's there's, there's that genuine fear because you know all of that stuff's just associated with sport but if you think about what's actually happening in the world you know there's a lot of, of kind of fear around that as well like genuine fear about what's happening um and i think it's okay to to, to acknowledge that as well Absolutely. I think um, there's a lot more to kind of sport at the moment. Um, I'm like watching the news and like it, it becomes quite scary and you, it, it can build some anxiety no matter kind of how in control of your emotions are. Let's talk about that to start off with. If somebody is feeling a bit anxious about, you know, training and that that uncertainty what kind of things can they be doing to help reduce that um well i guess there's a couple of things on on, on one level there's this idea that you know we we tend to think of emotions as being good or bad so we tend to think of okay anxiety that's bad i shouldn't feel that all right because you know mentally tough if that's what you want to call it mentally tough athletes don't feel anxiety all right they're tough all the time um so I think the first thing to do is understand that, you know, there's no right or wrong way to be feeling at the minute. You know, this is something that, you know, none of us have ever experienced before. We don't know what's happening day to day. So however you're responding to that, whether it's with a little bit of anxiety, whether it was, you know, with that kind of genuine fear or whether you are kind of completely ignoring it and going out and training and kind of just working on, on your own stuff all the time, like all of those reactions are absolutely fine. And we shouldn't kind of be, 
you know, beating ourselves up about feeling a little bit of anxiety or nervousness. You know, we kind of tend to do that. Anxiety is bad, so I shouldn't feel it. And then you feel bad about feeling anxiety and then it just kind of gets worse and worse. So just kind of on a practical level, understanding that any kind of emotions that we're feeling right now are absolutely fine and we can just kind of accept that. On a, a practical level, um, again, with so much flying around, the tendency is to spend, you know, hours just scrolling through Twitter and scrolling through Facebook and, and looking at the news and kind of, you know, seeing all of this stuff that's coming in constantly. We've got 24 hour news. And if we're kind of doing that and it's causing a bit of that anxiety that you talk about, stop doing it. You know, if, 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 if looking at the news is helping you do it, if it's causing you that anxiety, then don't do it. Or, you know, say, okay, well, I'm going to check the news once at like, you know, in the morning and then, you know, whatever else happens during the day, it's not going to affect my day. You know, if I don't find it out until the next morning when it's my time to check the news, like it's not going to make a difference. So, you know, a couple of practical things as well around that, you know, limit your social media, uh, limit your time, you know, look, you know, watching the news. And just, just by following the government guidelines as well can reduce that anxiety because mm -hmm. when I was, well, I was following the government guidelines, but you're thinking, right, we're going to have a lockdown soon. And when I was interacting with people, I felt a bit like anxious of like either catching it or passing it on or like thinking, oh, I've got, oh, I've got symptoms, like, like you feel a little pain in your chest and you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, I've got symptoms straight away. And then as soon as you're in the house and away from everybody, them symptoms like kind of go away. So I think yeah. if anybody's like, uh, is anxious about kind of the whole kind of coronavirus, um, like catching it or passing it on, just by following the government guidelines and staying indoors and and uh, limiting your kind of uh, trips to the shop and everything like that, that will reduce the anxiety uh, massively. Yeah. In term in terms of a, a sporting sense, so we took uh, what I really like there is the fact that you said about accepting that you are going to feel anxious, and another emotion that you're going to feel is kind of that low motivation. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to like quite a few of my athletes that I work with, and they're low on motivation and they're feeling bad for it, and I'm yeah. just saying. You are gonna feel you, you are gonna feel low motivation. So I've been like kind of like setting them minimum tasks to do mm. to to do whilst they've been in low motivation. Just keep them ticking along. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to be going out one hundred percent training like you normally do when you're five weeks away from a fight. If you just do the minimum, just just allow yourself to do the minimum to get by, to tick over, mm. to be ready when we're ready uh, when we're back ready to to train and compete again and then that's probably the best thing that you can do but in terms of like that low motivation what are the different ways that you can increase motivation uh, especially during lockdown um we've well, i mean you you and i have talked about motivation before haven't we we've talked about the difference between uh perhaps motivation and commitment and you're absolutely right motivation can be pretty low at times um and it can be really high at other times it fluctuates right because motivation is kind of more of a feeling um whereas the commitment's more of a of an action yeah so i could kind of explain what i mean by that so um like are, are you ever motivated to like do the dishes or you know hoover the floor you ever kind of really, like right brilliant this is time I'm gonna do that now you, you ever feel like that probably not I'll, I'll probably call to action if I'm uh, going to get told off for not doing it. <laughs> right, but we're never really motivated to do stuff like that. I don't have a, like a high level of motivation to do the dishes, but I am committed to having a house that isn't like filthy and stinky. Yeah, so I just do it because that's my commitment, right? And then when you when you do it, you know, I've got a, I've got a tidy house, right? It's nice. I like having a tidy house. That's a nice feeling. So I'm therefore a little bit more motivated to to maybe do it next time. But that motivation is a feeling that comes and goes. So like, you know, we talked about training before and how I'm adapting my training. I'm not motivated to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get a workout in. Like, I like staying in bed, right? I'm, I'm not motivated to do that. But I am committed to doing some exercise every day, 
right? So I get up and I do it and I go outside um, and then, you know, you do a little bit of exercise, you feel good. And then that increases your motivation to, to perhaps do it the next time. So rather than focusing on like increasing motivation, again, it's maybe just accepting that sometimes you're, you're going to be really motivated to do something. And sometimes you're just not, all right? Instead, can I make those commitments to doing something? So like, you know, you said, can I make a commitment to just doing something every day? Something's better than nothing, yeah? And if I can commit to that and follow through on that and do it, then maybe, you know, gradually I'll get that feeling of motivation again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about making those commitments. Okay, what is it that I'm going to really kind of just commit to doing? Write that stuff down, you know? And if it's the bare minimum, it's the bare minimum, you know? That's, that's absolutely fine. Again, it's kind of accepting that, that this is an extraordinary situation and I can do what I can do and no more. Yeah, and what you're saying there about kind of that commitment it brings me on to like kind of goal setting. Mm. So like with goal setting, obviously we, we can focus on like kind of six week targets and everything like that. But like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty. So do we bring goal setting to weekly or maybe even a daily basis? Um, it's again, you know, that, that sort of long-term goals are, are completely like out of sight. We don't know when, we don't know when we're going to be competing again. We don't know when training is going to kick in again. Um, but I guess a lot of those kind of basic goal setting skills that athletes already have will be really useful. And, you know, you all have heard of smart goals you know being specific and measurable and all that stuff like i like to break it down into what do you want to do and how are you going to do it um and just keep it as simple as that and those things still apply you know that doesn't change what do you want to get done and how are you going to do that um and perhaps you're right perhaps that kind of we do that on a daily basis you know what am i going to do today uh rather than thinking like really long term um but that, you know, the, the kind of basics of it don't really change. Um, I think a couple of things might change, though. You know, we have to be a little bit more flexible in, in our goals and a little bit kinder to ourselves uh, as well. You know, in terms of equipment, even, you know, like what it is that you're actually doing, you know, you might not be able to train in the same way that you, you know, ordinarily do. So can I be a little bit more flexible about that? And, you know, I've been watching some of your videos on, uh, on Insta um with your training beard and uh, which I, I like the training beard i think you should bring that back it's coming back it might be four weeks and we might be out of lockdown then so <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time <laughs> but i think you know it's certainly adapting the, the the how in terms of the goal setting i think is really important um but yeah in terms of the uh the the, the what you want to do and how you're going to do it i think just focus on um week by week day to day uh, the, we always have that that you know why we're doing it as well that long-term goal and maybe that's the thing that we need to adapt a little bit you know rather than your uh long-term you know why am i doing this being okay well because i'm competing in 12 weeks time or because you know it's the olympics in six months or whatever you know rather than it being that maybe it's about okay well what's important to me is it to like you know stay the sharpest that i can possibly be so i'm ready when this you know when, when this is all over maybe i value that maybe i value my health maybe i value staying fit so trying to maybe keep in mind you know what's important to you as a person rather than what's your like sporting goal uh might be a better way of of, of kind of looking at that long-term um uh, achievement i guess yeah, and something that you say there is about being as ready and as sharp as you can be for when we return back to training. I think a good thing to, for boxers to aim for is to be around about six weeks out when they get back to the gym. So that's with the weight, that's with the conditioning. So when they get back into the gym, they're, they're ready for a fight day within that six weeks because like I've been asked quite a lot what should... I'll be doing during lockdown and everything like that and I'm quite cautious in what I'm saying even, even though like it's a great opportunity because you're not doing as much boxing so you can work on different physiological adaptations so if you've got access to loads of weights perfect time to work on max strength mm -hmm. if you um, haven't got access to loads of weight 
you know, we can be doing 30 second max out sprints, but at the same time, I'm thinking, how long is this athlete's training camp going to be? Because let's say if we're allowed back out in another six weeks time and we're, we're uh, out from lockdown, they've got another six weeks with their boxing trainer to be able mm. to get fit for a fight, to get the sparring in, pad work, bag work. And you're talking about a 16, 20 week camp and not every athlete can take that, especially like when it comes to weight cutting and how intense boxing is. So maybe having that goal of being six weeks out and noting down what does that look like? Mm -hmm. what, what weight do you need to be? What yeah. level of fitness do you need to be? What strength? And we're saying about adapting to our training environment, work on your areas for improvement. So a lot of boxers struggle with mobility. So a great thing to kind of work on is your shoulder mobility, rotational mobility, mm -hmm. like kind of hip mobility and glute strength as well. When we're in training camp, we kind of limited because they're getting kind of tight and sore from the hours and hours of boxing training. So like when we get that taken away, it's a perfect opportunity to kind of maximise that. So you can end up not only being six weeks out, but be a better version of yourself um, post pandemic. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, you talk about like switching focus a little bit and working on, you know, uh, weaknesses as well as strengths. And it's a great time to work on the mental aspect of you, of, 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 you know, of the sport as well. You know, so work on your, your kind of mindfulness, you know, work on your ability to stay in the present moment. Um, you know, take some time to, to work on some of those things as well as the physical uh, fitness. Yeah. And studying uh, old fights as well. Yeah. There's a lot of like uh, old fights coming up on YouTube and everything like that. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of, of boxers that you can go and study and try and implement that into some shadow boxing and everything like that. So when you get back, you, you're working on new things mm -hmm. automatically. Um, so let's talk about a, another um, kind of psychological area. When we are returning back to the gym, Oh, we might be thinking, are we as good as what we used to be? And when we spend, you know, when we take ourselves away from the gym for so long, mm -hmm. we get back on the pads and the bags, it's going to feel very weird. Your timing's going to be off. You're not going to be as fit. What are the things that we can do to make sure that we maintain uh, kind of that confidence and, and self-belief? Um yeah, I mean, I think first of all, accepting that everybody else is in the same position, you know, like everybody else, everybody's in the same boat here. Nobody knows how long this is going to be going on for. Um, but, you know, I think it's that switch in mindset rather than looking at this as, OK, well, this is a bit of a disaster and this is kind of like knock my training out of out of whack. You know, think of it more as a challenge, like this is a, an, an obstacle to be overcome. Right. And that in the journey to me being great. It's like, um, you know, it, 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 it's it's almost like when you get injured in a way, it's it's you've got those goal setting skills. You've got those kind of um, skills to be able to build yourself back up from injury, focusing on different things. This is exactly the same as that. We just have to train in a slightly different way. But our confidence comes from those, um, you know, small steps, achievements that we've, you know, that, we, that, that, that we've achieved. Um and we can still do that. So what have I done today? Right. Okay. I'm going to write that down. What have I done that's made me better than I was yesterday? And, you know, it, when we do come out of all of this, you can look back at that. All right. Well, I was stuck in my house for like, you know, three months or whatever, unable to leave the house. Look at all the stuff that I've achieved, you know, because you've written it down. Well, well, today I did this, today I did that, you know, that day I did something else. And you've got this kind of whole diary almost of, okay, well, look at all of the things that I've done in that however long it is that we're stuck in for um and that's that's a great confidence booster yeah yeah i've been keeping a, a to-do list and i was thinking about that the other day like i'm going to get all this together and show what i've actually done well not show it out because nobody would be bothered, <laughs> really bothered. uh but but show it to myself like mm -hmm. look what you've done during lockdown you've done yeah. so much so much stuff because i've been probably been working harder during lockdown than i know i do when I'm in mm -hmm. the gym because yeah. when I'm in the gym, I'm coaching. I'm, I enjoy socialising with the lads and everything. 
Uh, but like now it's just like kind of right d- doing as much kind of content and as much programming as possible. I mm-hmm. actually feel like I'm working harder yeah. uh, during lockdown and it's been good that I do have a to-do list every day. Yeah, uh, I've got all that saved and I can just like look back and go, you know what, that's, that's off to yourself. So maybe yeah. like, that's what they need to do. Keep training diary, which we always encourage anyway. Yeah. Um, to then have a look back and write down like look what I've done like, look how productive I've been because yeah. the days are merging into one and you'll forget like kind of what you um, what you've actually done and what you've achieved so that's a great point I just, I just wanted to um, just to kind of make a point about the last thing that you said so you were talking about um, uh Right, keeping a training diary, writing down everything that we've done, kind of being able to look back on that as a, as a kind of source of confidence. This is what I've done. I guess one thing to be aware of, or perhaps wary of, you know, we talked earlier about social media and paying attention to, to social media. You know, one thing I've seen quite a lot of is this whole idea of, you know, if you don't come out of lockdown having learned two new languages, you know, knowing how to play the saxophone. You know, then you're you're a failure basically because you haven't done all of this stuff like look you got to take care of yourself first and foremost you know you've got to take care of yourself your health your well-being your family because people have got a lot of of concerns a lot of kind of you know genuine concerns about what's happening so yes while we want to be doing that and making a note of all of our achievements and all of the stuff that we've done a take what people are saying on social media with a pinch of salt and b just be a little bit kind to yourself. So if you're not kind of achieving the 8 million things that you've written down on your to-do list, maybe don't beat yourself up about that. Maybe write down like two or three things instead of, you know, 11, 12, 13 or whatever. Um, so yeah, just a kind of point to be a little bit wary about. Absolutely. Like you're saying there, um, you know, like what people are saying on social media, there's a lot of kind of like positive vibes and but everybody's going to be feeling this strain of, of lockdown people are going to have dips in motivation and commitment i've said it myself when i've felt rubbish and and unmotivated i've like gone out and i've done something to just make myself feel better but i've let everybody know that i've felt like that um and there has been days where i've got out of bed like closer to 12 o'clock than what i should be um but then there's some days where I get up and I'm really motivated. I'm getting up at seven. I'm getting loads of jobs done. But then, you know, you've got to take each each day as it comes. It's going to be a pretty long time. Um, and a good thing that it is, and we're talking from a psychological point of view, it's a good time to just kind of slow down, relax, de-stress. I feel like I've really de-stressed over the last three weeks and I'm feeling like much more better and much more healthier in, my, in myself, just from kind of like stepping away from kind of the, the hustle and bustle of an everyday life of a strength and conditioning coach. So I think it's not only good to be productive, but it's a good time to relax and, and de-stress and be ready for when we're back in action. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, if you're kind of worrying about where you're going to get eggs from, and you know spending two hours standing in a supermarket queue you know maybe you don't have time to do everything that you want to do and you know learn how to play the flute maybe you just don't have time to do all that stuff you know so yeah just be kind to yourself and it goes right back to what we said at the start about accepting that you know maybe some days you are a little bit more anxious about it maybe some days you feel fine maybe some days you and all of those things are, are, are okay to be feeling and just being a little bit i guess like vulnerable like showing that vulnerability yeah. So the final thing that I'm going to talk about, and all the, you know, this this full kind of like interview and discussion has, has been fantastic, and I think that a lot of people in general, not just athletes and coaches, will be will take a lot of value from it, and will be feeling a lot better about their training, about the work, and and uh, kind of work life balance, but. A lot of coaches will be watching this, and some athletes will be, mm-hmm. but how does a coach get all this kind of information and kind of help kind of filter that down to, to an athlete? So what should coaches be doing to help 
an athlete psychologically during this point? Okay, so this is this is an interesting one because this is kind of like my area of research about coaches and coaching stress and, 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 and burnout. And, you know, to be honest, the thing that coaches can do to help their athletes the most is to look after themselves. Um, you know, coaches have a tendency to you know, look after their athletes and, and, and rightly so, you know, that's their jobs. They feel I have a duty of care to their athletes that the kind of, you know, priority I need to look after these guys. Um, and as I say, that's, that's exactly how it should be. Um, but if they're not looking after themselves as well, then they're not going to be any use. So all of the stuff that we've talked about, about, you know, being accepting of their own kind of responses and feelings towards what's happening, um, setting themselves, got all of the skills that they would want their athletes to to show all of the skills that they would want their athletes to to learn and to be doing during this like practice that yourself you know so like be mindful take a, a step back and you know do some you know take some time to relax set yourself to do lists write yourself goals you know all of those things that we've talked about i would encourage coaches to be doing exactly the same thing you know looking after their own well-being is 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 you know paramount because if you're trying to deal with all of this stuff that's going on you know, all of this kind of stuff that's flying around right now, whilst also looking after, you know, a, a bunch of athletes that you coach and making sure that they're doing okay, you, you're going to come unstuck eventually. So look after yourself first and then kind of take care of your athletes. Um, I guess in, in terms of kind of some of the more practical stuff, again, I think we're in a period of, of, of social distancing. I think physical distancing is probably more appropriate because we can be physically distant, but maintain like social contact, right? So, you know, one of the first things that I did when I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get in the gym was I texted a friend and said, look, you know, let's send each other workouts. Let's keep, keep each other accountable um, so that we kind of like, you know, keeping, keeping each other motivated, keeping each other kind of committed to, to staying healthy, right? Um, so I think coaches have perhaps got a role there keeping their athletes together, you know, keeping their athletes socially connected, even if they're physically distant from one another. And, you know, we've got the technology to do that these days. We've got WhatsApp, we've got Zoom, we've got Skype, we've got all these things um, to kind of keep ourselves connected socially. I think it's more important to do that now than maybe it ever has been before. Um, keeping that kind of sense of community with, with your athletes is something that's really important. And I think, yeah, coaches have perhaps got a, a role to play in that. 100% and like I said about the technology these days like with with zoom you know you can get 30 to even 100 people like kind of on one chat at a time and if you're working within um, a boxing gym or like if you're watching this and you're involved with team sports get all the team together and do a workout um, yeah. Reds are, um, what, what's been really good with the uh, Reds are running uh, we've done the uh, I want, want to see you on this, Pete, as well. The Red Zone Running 1K Challenge, and I've had, yeah. I've been, I've been having interactions with friends, with athletes, with fellow coaches, saying, "Try out this 1K Challenge," and 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 people have been like messaging me with the times and everything, and it's been like, it's been like great kind of interaction. So maybe like get some sort of, it doesn't have to be the 1K Challenge. It can mm -hmm. be, a ch like a. I haven't been enjoying these kind of these nominations uh, kind of things like where you have to down like people have been down in pints now like down pint and then nominate three friends. I haven't been like enjoying kind of being nominated for stuff like that, but I think like that kind of thing a good it can be good within like your kind of environment where mm -hmm. on your WhatsApp group or your group chat or whatever, whatever you use to kind of communicate with a group of athletes set yourself like little challenges how many one arm press ups can you do how high can you jump different yeah. thing uh, different things get people interacting with each other and that will not only help your your mental well-being and your social well-being but also will keep you motivated to keep training and uh, yeah. uh, will uh, help improve your physical well-being as well yeah well i've seen a couple of examples uh, uh, a basketball coach that i know you know, got all his under fourteens on Zoom together, and they all, they, you know, they watch the basketball film, and just kind of like chatting about the film as it's on. You know, so it's, it's, it, yes, there's the kind of training element of it, 
But again, just that kind of social connection, I think, is important. So, yeah, some of these challenges, um, just, you know, doing what you can do to, to, to stay in touch, I think, um, while all of this stuff's going on. Okay, we'll leave it there, Pete. Fantastic kind of knowledge, experience and information for people to absorb, value and hopefully, hopefully implement. Um, if anybody's got any questions or comments about anything that me and Pete have discussed, uh, contact us at boxing.sci at gmail.com or leave them in the comment box below. Um, enjoy the rest of uh, lockdown, Pete. Keep training hard. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll do my best and get that one k challenge done. Yeah, well, I live on the top of a hill though, so you know I, I have to either run uphill or downhill for uh, at least two of those you know kilometers. So I don't know if I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> okay, cheers, Pete. I'll speak All to right, you soon. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it.